Come on in, everyone. Come on in because we are here for the recap of Married at First Sight, Season 17, Episode 16. And my name is Deborah. And we're here talking about this Episode 16. And I just want to know what is in the weed in Colorado? What is in the weed in Colorado? Um, we got to talk about all these blurred gender lines going on this season. Definitely some blurred gender lines. I don't know which way everyone's going to fall. I don't know what people are used to. But you know what, y'all? I did pick up on something about Michael. I remember last week I said, oh, I don't see nothing wrong with Michael. I don't see nothing wrong with Michael. And I'm going to say this. I'm not even really going to get on him because he likes to wear earrings and skirts. And we'll talk about that. But I will say this. I don't, think, I don't know if Michael knows how to read a room. Because I was reading a whole lot of facial expressions from Chloe. And I don't think Michael was picking up on none of them, y'all. Not a one. We had a really good time with each other, but it was also very intense. Mm -hmm. So I think we're both trying to roll with the punches, but also really, you know, enjoy each other's company. Yeah. I know he's very, very communicative. He's very emotionally intelligent. But he might be lacking in the area of nonverbal communication. He might just be going off completely what she's saying. And he's not going off of her um, facial expressions. If he starts walk, watching some of these facial expressions, he may get the clue that she don't like all this. She don't like this skirt wearing. She don't like this earring wearing. She don't like none of it, especially before he has fully shown her and shown his masculine side. You know, maybe he could introduce a hoop earring. <laughs> maybe he could introduce a hoop earring after he's thrown her on the couch and bend her over. <laughs> Maybe then she'd be okay with the hoop earring, but it might be a little bit too soon. Might be a little bit too soon. I'm starting to get a little scary. I'm not for sure this is going to work. Just like we said in the beginning, we didn't know if it would work. We didn't know if um, Chloe's rigidness, she's kind of like in a box. She's really, you know, even though she said she was a minimalist, when we went to her apartment, that didn't look like no minimalist to me. Not at all, but let's just go with it. Um, I'm not for sure. Um... She's going to be able to come outside of her comfort zone enough with Michael. Michael's out there. Like I said, I don't know what's going on the weed. We done had, um, what's his name, Austin, finally get his meat beat. <laughs> he finally got his meat beat, but it wasn't by Becca. It was by some random man in a bathhouse. I would do it again. It was, it was a lot of fun. It was my, my first spa day ever. I ain't going to call that no massage. I'm not going to call that a spa where you get a massage. I'm going to call it a bathhouse. And he finally did get his meat beat. And after he got his meat beat, he says, I don't need to sleep in the bed with you no more. I'm satisfied. Okay, well, that's not how massages normally go. Just All right, go that's clean. fair. Yeah, you know, when I saw the hats, I was like, oh, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. It was a wild experience. Uh -huh. <laughs> I am satisfied. We're going to weave in a little bit of this after party as well, y'all. Because I did watch the after party. I'm just going to weave it in right here with this regular um, review of this episode. I mean, even if Michael wasn't wearing a skirt or wearing an earring, there are a couple of things about Chloe where she's definitely unprepared for this, um, this situation. And we know it's a situation getting married at first sight. But she said she was being nerve wracking, even moving into the house because she's such an introvert and she might be comfortable, uncomfortable in a new place to live. Well, girl... Ooh, I don't know. Take you some anxiety pills. Take you something. Because no matter who you marry, no matter what, you're going to have to move into a new place. Um, but anyway, so she was nerve wracked at first. But once she saw the place, she liked it. And, you know, she said she's a giver. She said she's a giver. And in this moment, she did give Michael the larger closet because she felt he was going to have more clothes than her. I think the thing that stands out to me is just how empathetic and caring she is. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the things that I knew going into this is that that's an area... Not so much the caring part, but the empathy part. I know yeah. I have a lot to, to learn in that space. So that right off the bat made me feel like there's, there's really something here that could make us last. But come to find out, when we saw that closet of hers, she had a lot of clothes, a lot of clothes in it. Always known the right thing to say. Honestly, no. I think in my younger years, I was more in the mindset of like, if we got into a challenging conversation, I'd get into the mode of like waiting to speak, right? I would think of something and be like, oh, I really want oh, to so say this. Oh, so you'd stop listening. She had some anxiety because she said she was ready to come home and decompress because, um, you know, she's, she's used to being an introvert. So I guess two days on that honeymoon in Colorado was enough people time. She says, I'm ready to come home and sit on the couch and sit in my closet and not talk to no one. But now I still got a husband. 
girl <laughs> i feel for the introverts i do feel for the introverts because i think they all all introverts have their time limit right how much time can they be with people before they need some alone time and listen people may think i'm a full-on extrovert but i need a long time too i need a long time too i got limits as well even when i come home from work sometimes my husband be like you don't want to talk because i need at least at least 40 minutes to decompress before people are all over me asking me questions asking me for things i need time to decompress i need some alone time not intentionally but that would happen mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. what i've learned as i've gotten older is that if you're just in that moment to receive it then the, naturally the words will come to you you know Chloe's a woman after my own heart in bed by 7 45 <laughs> the problem is i'm a whole lot older than her girl you too young to be going to bed at 7 45 <laughs> that's way too young i don't know what's going on with that is that to get away from your husband? As the resident crybaby of the bunch, I'm glad that she that you put her at ease about her tears. And I always say it's not really the conflict that erodes relationships. It's the how you bounce back yeah. from it. And sure. I think that was a great bounce back. So hey, Chloe, that is not the way that you put a duvet on a, a duvet cover on a duvet. Girl, what are you doing? But you know what? It was sexy to Michael. Michael said, ooh. I like the scenery. I like the way it looks. There you go, Michael. Let us know you like the way that she looks. Let us know that you're attracted to her. She knows that you are sexually attracted to her. Yes. And do you feel she's sexually attracted to you? I do. Okay. I do. But I also and he is obviously attracted to her. Keisha Knight pulling him asked him straight up, straight up. Are you heterosexual? Tell me about your sexual preferences. And Michael said, oh, no, I'm heterosexual. I'm definitely heterosexual. And Chloe knows that I'm attracted to her. I tell her all the time. Um, so he said, there ain't no problem in that book. There, there isn't one problem whatsoever in that book. Don't get it twisted. That's what Michael's saying. Straight. Okay. You know, I've always, my, from a sexual preference, I've always been, you know, heterosexual in, okay. that, in that regard. You know, and credit to Chloe, I don't feel like she has any concerns with yeah. that. You know, I think... I've been very clear about my sexual desires with her, so mm -hmm. I never felt like that was ever called into question by her. So, so Michael saying, "Don't get it twisted. It's just a little something in the weed in Colorado. That's all." The fact that, like, I'm a, you know, I can be a lot to take in if I'm especially okay. being outside the norm for okay. her. Um, but I feel it. Okay. It's just Michael said he's from California. You know, all this eclectic style that he has going on and everything. Um, come to find out he's actually from California. He lived in California. Did he say he lived in California for 10 years and then moved to Colorado? I believe that might be what he said. So he got a lot of L.A. in him. He's from Anaheim. He's from Disneyland, y'all. I'm from Southern California, so I grew up in Orange County. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Making was, more sense for me. Yeah, and I, I lived in L.A. for about a decade before moving to Denver. Okay. Maybe maybe that makes it sense for a lot of you now. And the fact that you know he's from Anaheim, California, which is Disneyland, um, the land of the costume. So, you know, and in Anaheim, there are a lot of uh, Filipinos that live around the Anaheim area. So he did say that he's Filipino. So, you know, all of it makes a lot, a lot of sense. Chloe's saying all the right things that she values his authentic self. She said all the corporate, the corporate lines, you could tell, uh, uh, you could tell Chloe been trained by corporate America, DEI training, because she's saying all the right things, but something tells me she doesn't believe everything that she's saying. Something tells me Chloe doesn't believe everything she's saying, but she's saying all the right stuff. She has been through all her DEI modules, every single one of them, but she didn't tell Pastor Cal straight up, listen, I would have never been out with this man. This is a man I would have never gone out with, would have never gone to a bar with. But to be honest with you, he might be a good balance to her masculine side. He really might be. He might really be a balance to Chloe's more rigidness, um, you know, her more logical thinking. You know, it might be what he needs because I don't know if a person who's as logical and who is as introverted and who's a minimalist, a man like that would be a good a catch or quality for Chloe. I really don't. I think you do need a, a man who maybe has a little bit more emotion to him so he understands her a little bit more, especially because she, su she suffers from anxiety. Uh, Chloe got a lot of quirks. She got a lot of quirks. So she is going to need somebody who really, really tries to understand her a bit more. Is your most unique piece of clothing and or apparel that you that you have? They are a pair of sneakers that kind of look like boots okay. so if you took a sneaker and you kind of stretched it out okay. to like a wrestler boot it looks okay. like a moon boot it does look like a moon boot and okay. it's they keep saying they want to uh, you know have this emotional connection before intimacy 
Something tells me I don't even know if they're going to seal the deal with sex, y'all. I hope they don't be another couple that don't have sex. We are 0 for 4 this season with sex. 0 for 4. Ain't nobody humping in the bed. Nobody. Everybody's getting drunk. Everybody's uh, probably uh, smoking some ganja, getting high, but ain't nobody humping in the bed. Even though we're still wanting to build that emotional connection first before having sex, like okay. we're fooling around. We're also, we're walking around naked all the time. Like okay. it, that comfort is there. You okay. Know? We have that comfort. We just know, all right, let's continue to build on this. You even go on this retreat and everybody's sleeping in separate bedrooms. Even Brennan and Emily now are sleeping in separate bedrooms. I was, kind of, I was fangirling about uh, being in one of the Broncos players' house. You know, when I... This is ridiculous. And Austin started in the same bedroom with Becca, but after he had his happy ending over there when he got his meat beat, he said, I don't even need to sleep in the same bedroom with you anymore. He darn near saw um, Becca naked when they was getting a meat beat. And guess what? He still wasn't turned on by her. He was, you know, a professional football player for the Denver Broncos. Okay. And one of my all-time favorite players. Okay. And I actually, through like, you know, a distant connection, knew his personal chef. So I like... He saw, I darn near saw her breastuses. He saw her breastuses. He saw everything. And he wasn't interested. He doesn't even find Becca um, sexually attractive, y'all. I'm going to say it now. You know, it, it goes further than maybe not liking something about the fact that she's agnostic, the fact that she doesn't want to have children, the fact that she has had medical conditions. I don't think that he's sexually attracted to Becca, period. Because you know what? His lust would take over. If he was really lustful about Becca, even if in his mind or he thought we're not a good match, he was still, I think he would still sleep with her. That's what I believe. I don't think he's attracted to her. And I'm not going to say she's not a good looking girl. I'm not. I'm not going to say that. But be honest with you, she ain't no a beauty star. Let's be real. I took a real good look at Becca this, this episode. I really never really said nothing or really got into it, right? But when I looked at her with no makeup on and that bathing suit, I said to myself, ooh, he may not be attracted. And ain't nothing really wrong with her. I mean, you know, she's a young woman. She's never had any kids. You know, um, I don't know, may not be what he's used to. I'm just going to say he may not be what he's used to. I've never gotten a massage, okay. but much less have I been beaten with eucalyptus in a sauna right. that's a billion degrees and then like have honey rubbed well, all over me. Did the me. man rub the honey on you? I'm just no, curious. No, the okay. man did not. No, no, okay. our, our masseuses did. That was a he seemed like he was more interested in that man who uh, beat him with that eucalyptus than he is into Becca. I'm telling you, Becca, that man got closer to Austin than Becca has ever gotten closer to Austin. That man uh, beat him. And then I guess later on, they said they got um, honey rubbed all over him, even though he said the honey was not rubbed on here by this man. And then he tells a crazy story that the man that rubbed was in the room, y'all, wasn't even an employee of the area. So this is just some random man from a bathhouse that you let come over and beat you, beat your meat. The funniest so part, funny. he wasn't even an employee. He was just what? a regular. I'm not kidding. He's a volunteer. Time out. He, volunteered. he didn't even get paid for this? He didn't get paid. The owners asked him if he wanted to be there because he is he's such a regular that he has taken it upon himself to do that for just guests that come in like day to day. That's, that's his Austin is questionable. We want to talk about um, Michael being questionable. Austin is questionable. At least Orion, Orion, at least Orion was straight up. See, I know y'all now coming to really appreciate Orion. You guys have got to be coming around to appreciate parts of Orion. And that is his a willing to tell you the truth about his sexual preferences, history, what he does. All these other men are now slowly leaking this information out. Slowly leaking it out. What they're willing to do, uh, uh, you know, but at least Orion set it up front and you can make your decisions. Yeah, he's getting back on here again about to uh, play with uh, Lauren's emotions again and say, hey, I really want to get to know you again. Did y'all see them see them previews for next week? And Lauren, she's just as much as confusing as me, too. At one time, Lauren says she's mad because Orion didn't reach out to her. Orion said he wanted to be friends but never called her. So then she's mad. But then on the other hand, she says she's sick and tired of Orion. <laughs> Genuinely never know what he wants. I never know what he's thinking. I honestly thought this was going to be like one of those, hey, and keep it moving type of yeah. couple retreat with him, but not overly talkative. Because right. all we do is talk. 
Like I said, I don't know who, who Lauren is either. One way she complains when he reaches out, talks to her, she's like, I don't want to have no conversation with him. Then when he says, okay, I'm going to call you, and he doesn't call, then she's mad at that. I really don't understand this one bit. And be honest with you, I don't even know why they're still on our screen. Claire, too. Yeah, I knew Orion was coming. He okay. told me he was planning on coming. Okay. Him coming wasn't the factor of me not wanting to come. Okay. It was more so just, why am I here on a couple's retreat? You know? Got it. So in that moment, I'm just sitting here thinking, like, we don't really got to do all that. We already had the Lauren right. and Orion it's show. It's just like Claire said, oh, why are we here at the retreat and we ain't even got no husbands? Ditto, exactly. Why are you guys at the retreat and you don't even have any husbands? That's what I want to know, too. I'm a really fun girl, and I just feel like all I do is cry and talk and cry and talk, and now I just really wanted to just have fun with everyone, him included. Yeah. Claire over here finally, I think she's admitted, trying to finally admit that Cameron don't want her. It has nothing to do with him being ill. Nothing. Recovering from no heart surgery. Nothing. None of that. That has nothing to do with it. He don't want to be with you, period. Finally, finally, she can be the one that says, oh, I just got to tell you guys, we broke up. You know that girlfriend who don't tell you she broke up with her boyfriend or her husband for two months later, and you be fine, like, girl, I'll never see your man no more. What happened? She'd be like, oh, yeah, we broke up. Well, why didn't you tell us? I mean, it's, that's Claire. Claire ain't ready to tell everybody. Claire is not ready to tell everybody. You tell everybody in your own due time. I understand that, Claire. So now Claire is finally starting to admit, hey, we really not together. It really don't have nothing to do with his heart surgery. He just don't want to be with me, period. So Lauren, after some back and forth, what ultimately made you decide to go on the retreat? Claire's my girl. So we kind of had this deal that we'll both go and kind of just fade into the background and let the couples do their thing. Okay. Well, I tried to fade into the background. <laughs> and poor Becca still trying to get Austin in the bed all the time. Why is she worried about trying to get uh, Austin in the bed all the time? Breast Rebecca, that like, I was like, I, I want to do this. Like, this is important to me, even if it is for like some stupid reason. Uh -huh. Even if like, you don't understand. Yeah, and and she was hesitant and unwanting to uh -huh. go in there. At least that's how I was taking it. Okay. Ugh, starting to look really, really thirsty. When he started talking about, oh, we're going to go here and, you know, maybe this is the time we'll be able to consummate our marriage or get little intimate. She's just, yippee, yippee, like she about to get a prize. Girl, it ain't no prize. And in the end, he dumped you for the man over here that beat his meat. You got dumped again, Becca. And she's like, oh, that's the part I'm looking most forward to. Ugh. Becca, Becca, Becca. Absolutely not. This is wrong, Becca. Leave it alone, Becca. This is starting to look horrible. You're starting to look desperate. It's starting to look ridiculous, Becca. Stop it. Just stop chasing this man, period. Instead of him going to another room, you need to go to another room. Women, you need to flip this stuff. Stop having these men reject you. Reject these men. Becca, you go sleep in the other room. Be done with Austin. Austin is done with you. Did you see the way Austin lit up for that man who was beating him with the eucalyptus? He lit up for him. He turned over. He did everything. You ain't never been that close to Austin. Never. Never. I bet he did. I bet he did Austin's front side and back side. I know they just showed the back side, but I did. He did his front side too. I bet he did. Becca thought she was being slick, booking like uh, massages when um when old girl over here Emily big, booked the ATV rise. They both chose wrong. <laughs> They both chose wrong. Uh, what's her name? Emily booked the ATV talking about we're going to have some fun. And she darn near killed herself out there because she's accident prone. That's what um, Lauren said. Lauren said Emily is accident prone. I hope she wasn't drinking beforehand. I hope it wasn't no situation where she had a few glasses of wine before she got on that ATV. But it's good to see she's okay. It's good to see that she's okay now. Okay. Because we've seen her on the after party. I wonder why they didn't put her on the after party. She should have been on the after party to tell us about that accident. Maybe she's going to come next week. I don't know. Or maybe it's too traumatizing. That might be it. It actually might be too traumatizing for her to talk about. Because it really was a scary situation. She could have lost her life. But you know what? Um, Brennan stepped up. Brennan stepped up and really cared for her. He was the first one to run over to her. He put pressure on the wound. He showed real concern for her. He held her hand. Bravo to you, Brennan, for the way you handled that situation. I'm ha I was happy to see that. Because remember, Brenda was the one that wouldn't even help him leave with her bags. So I was glad to see that uh, Brenda at least did the human decency thing. The human decency thing and ran over there and held the hand of his wife. And I think he rode in the ambulance with her to the hospital, right? I think he did. 
So that's a good thing for her. So I guess I kind of understand why Emily didn't come to the after party, but it would have been nice to hear it out of her own words. But I understand that's traumatic. Any type of accident like that could be very traumatic. But yeah, they bet wrong. Maybe it should have been Austin and um, Becca to take the ATVs and maybe Emily and Brennan should have done the Russian massages. Ain't, ain't a Brennan Russian, half Russian? Maybe that's what they should have done. Because uh, Becca bet wrong on thinking that the massages were going to be romantic. Uh, maybe she was thinking that they would switch up and they would give each other massages. And in the end, uh, Becca's man got stolen from this random man in the bathhouse. You bet wrong again, Becca. You bet wrong again. Even Lauren had to speak up for her girl, Becca. She, Lauren's still wearing pink. She had to speak up for Becca and say, hey, no girl wants to hear from her husband talking about you can come in the other room if you want to. <laughs> That's okay. You're right about that, Lauren. Someone tell me, some man tell me you can come if you want to. Well, then I don't want to. If you don't want me, I don't want you either. <laughs> if you don't want me, I don't want you either. That's how it works. It's really that simple. It is really that simple. I can go from warning you from when you don't want me, I don't want you. I can turn off just like that. Boom. Like a light switch. Um, I don't think that you meant any harm. I just want to start there. But no woman wants to hear, yeah, you can come if you want. Yeah. It doesn't sound very yeah, inviting. And she let me know that if you would have walked up behind her and said, hey, babe, like, let's go to the bedroom or like in some type of way that made her feel desired. It wasn't that she didn't want to sleep in the bed. She wanted to feel wanted. Right. And I think that you were just out to lunch. Right. I agree with right. That. Claire's still over here talking about she feels bad having fun without Cameron. <laughs> Cameron don't feel bad. He having fun right now. Cameron has more fun than you, Claire. And if you call this fun, Claire, then I don't I don't know what Claire calls fun. I guess Claire calls this fun, what, coming to a retreat with a bunch of married people and you unmarried. Girl, that ain't even the third wheel. You like the sixth wheel. That ain't fun. Well, it looks like we still not going to be done with Lauren and Ryan. It seem, seems like they still going to um, be on our screen. I guess Claire and Cameron still going to be on our screen. We still going to have to see everyone. But I lost a little bit of hope this week, y'all, with Chloe and... um. I did lose some hope with Chloe and Michael because I read the room. I read the room. I read the facial expressions of Chloe and it's not full on enthusiasm. It's not. I know she's trying to talk it up to be her anxiety, being uncomfortable, but honestly, I see a bit more. I don't know if she's going to be able to get used to this earring and skirt wearing and eclecticness of Michael. He knows he's an acquired taste. He does know that. And um, maybe that she's not going to be able to develop a taste for Michael. Um, we'll see. We'll see if they even make it to the sheets. We'll see if they'll still make it to the bedroom. We will see if Michael gets to roll around in that duvet cover like she did or if she's going to be the one on the inside and he's going to be on the one on the outside. Because um, is she still wearing them flannel pajamas? <laughs> Let me go back and look at the pajamas uh, Chloe got on. If she's still wearing them flannel pajamas, it's going to be a no. Anyway, y'all, that's it for this boring-ass season. But I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.